Hello, today we're going to look at the idea of strong and weak acids. Now, just to help us understand this idea, we're going to start by looking at what we call concentration of solutions. So to start off nice and simply, you can imagine that the concentration of a solution can be described as high or low. A low concentration would mean a dilute solution, so very watery. Um, if we have a high concentration, we might call that a concentrated solution a concentrated solution. So in terms of our dilute and concentrated, what's the actual difference? Well, you can measure the concentration and basically the more solute per decimeter cubed, so the more solute per given volume, i.e. a decimeter cubed, the more concentrated a solution. So we could give an example of, I don't know, maybe 50 grams per decimeter cubed, and that's a measurement of concentration. And if we've got a dilute solution, well, that would be uh, less concentrated, and in other words, we could have an example of maybe 5 grams per decimeter cubed. So that's a more dilute solution compared to the one above. We can do a quick calculation to work out the concentration of a solution. We've done this in detail before in a previous video, but imagine we had 25 grams of sulfuric acid dissolved in 0.2 decimeters cubed of water. What's the concentration? Well, we could say 25 grams of our solute is in 0.2 decimeters cubed. We want to know how much in one decimeter cubed. So what do we do to go from 0.2 to 1? We multiply by 5, so we do the same with our grams, and that gives us 125 grams. That's one way to do it, but you could also, if you understand this idea, you could probably just do, or in fact you can just do 25 divided by 0 0.2, and that will give you the same answer. And as, as I say, we've looked at this in detail in a previous video, but the answer is 125 grams per decimeters cubed. So that's one way of describing concentration and one way of calculating concentration from, from some information. Now, when we're looking at acids, we often talk not only in terms of concentration, but we also talk in terms of strength of acids as well. So, if we have a strong acid, this is different to having a concentrated acid. So, strength and concentration of acids are two different things, and we're going to see exactly why that is in a moment. We describe or measure the strength of an acid using pH, a lowercase p and a capital H, stands for power of hydrogen. And pH goes from 0 all the way up to zero, uh, 0 to 6 for acid. So from 0 to 6, that will be our acid pHs. And as we know, pHs can, or sorry, acids can be either strong or weak. They can be somewhere in the middle too, of course, but we often describe acids as being strong or weak acids. So we're going to actually see why we have acids of different strength, even though concentrations might be the same. So here's a bunch of acids that you need to know about. And remember, the weak acids are less common. We don't hear about those so much in chemistry, but we have ethanoic acid, which is found in vinegar, citric acid, which is found in what we call citrus fruits, for example, lemons. And we have carbonic acid, which is basically carbon dioxide dissolved in water, which makes fizzy water. So any fizzy drinks you have will, are going to have carbonic acid in them. So they are weak, but they are also not harmful as well. So we can have these two sets of acids and they can all be of the same concentration. So the acids on the left can be exactly the same concentration on the right, but the acids can be of different strengths. So let's have a look at one particular example. We can take a look at hydrochloric acid, HCl. And hydrochloric acid is basically hydrogen chloride dissolved in water. And when it dissolves in water, it will break down into two separate ions, hydrogen ions and chloride ions. We call this ionization. So ionization happens or hydrochloric acid is ionized in water to, for, to make the hydrochloric acid. And it's the hydrogen ions here that make the acid the acid. Acids are basically concentrations of hydrogen ions. So that's how we get the acid formed from hydrogen chloride. And we can say that if we have a high concentration of hydrogen ions, a high concentration of hydrogen ions, we can say that that gives us our strong acid. So strong acids have higher concentrations of hydrogen ions. Now, what is it that makes an acid strong? Well, it's to do with how much ionization actually happens. So when we look at the equation there, we can see that hydrogen chloride breaks down into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. We can have a look at 
An example from the weak acids as well. We can have a look at ethanoic acid. There's a formula for ethanoic acid and it breaks down into those two ions. One of them, of course, being hydrogen ions, which means it's going to be an acid. If we look at the equation here, it's reversible. The actual correct sign for reversible is that. Not what I've done below, it's what I've drawn out in the darker red. But we also have our hydrogen ions for our weak acids. But what's the difference? Well, even though the two solutions are the same concentration, the hydrogen chloride will become completely ionized, or pretty much completely ionized, whereas the ethanoic acid, the weak acid, will only become partially ionized. So there's going to be a lower concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution because there's less ionization, there's less breaking down into the ions. And not only that, the reaction is reversible, so the ions do reform as well. So the hydrogen ions are kept, or are, in a much lower concentration. Even though the actual concentration of the solution is the same, we get different strengths of acid. Okay, so same concentration, different pH. And that's the reason why we have strong and weak acids. It's all to do with the amount of ionization that happens. And it's all to do with hydrogen ion concentration as a result of that ionization. So the next thing I want to look at briefly is this idea of the concentration of hydrogen ions in acids. And we're going to link that, we're going to link that to pH. So here we've got our range of pHs all the way from 0 to 6, from pH 0 to pH 6. And as we know, the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. So pH 0 is going to be a strong acid, strong acid, whereas our pH 6 is going to be a weak acid. There's going to be a lower concentration of hydrogen ions. And the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. And we should be able to link that to the pattern in hydrogen ion concentrations of these acids. Now, hydrogen ion concentration gets higher every time we drop in pH. In fact, for a pH drop of 1, we get an increase in hydrogen ion concentration of times 10. So a drop in pH of 1 will give us a 10 times higher concentration of hydrogen ions. 10 times higher concentration of hydrogen ions. So that means every time we drop by a pH of 1, from 5 to 4, and 4 to 3, and so on, we get a 10 times increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. And you can see that in the little diagram there, for every step. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if we had a pH of 3 compared to a pH of 1, you can see that that's 2 drops in pH, so we would get times 10 times 10, higher concentration of hydrogen ions, and that would be overall a hundred times higher concentration of hydrogen ions for a pH drop of 2. Okay, so we can look at one more example, perhaps. Let's go from pH, let's say, um, pH 5 down to pH 1. No, down to pH 0. So that would be a hundred thousand times higher concentration of hydrogen ions as a result of a drop of 5 pHs. Okay, so every time we go down by one pH, ten times higher concentration of hydrogen ions. And that just basically means that we have, for a weak acid, there's partial ionization, and for a strong acid, there's more complete um, ionization, and therefore stronger acids. And there's the pattern in front of you there that we just talked about for how the hydrogen ion concentration changes. Okay, so that's me done for this video today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.